Out of the fog, out of the night, and into his American adventures comes Bulldog Drummond. Come with me to North Beach, one of the finest beaches on the Atlantic. Famous for its swimming, sports, and for Wind's Wonderland, a gay, exciting sportland without equal. Anthony Wynn, an old friend of mine from Mayfair, had opened his fun palace on the Sound, a short run out of the city. That evening, a gay crowd had gathered. They'd come for thrills, for laughter. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to Wynn's Wonderland on the Sound, the greatest playland, the greatest thrill land in the East. Come closer, ladies and gentlemen. See the greatest thrill ride in America, the fastest, raciest, the most daring roller coaster ride in the world, the whirlwind. The tenth part of a dollar, ladies and gentlemen, ten cents to ride with the wind, to feel the thrill of flying, to live dangerously. Step right up, folks, right this way. All off, end of the ride. All right, mister, this is the end of the line, all off. Hey, mister. Hey, Barker. Barker, come here. Something's the matter with this guy here. Now, what's going on here? Hey, look, mister, you have to get off or pay for another ride. Hey, now, do you hear me? Hey, stand back, please. Don't cry. Hey. What's the matter with him? This man is dead. Hey, move back there. Let me get him off. Now, wait a minute. Jump on Jay Hosefat. It's Mr. Wynn, the owner of the place. Captain Drummond speaking. Oh, Captain Drummond, thank goodness I've reached you. This is Isabel Wynn. Do you remember Anthony Wynn's daughter? Anthony Wynn? Why, of course, Miss Wynn. How are you? It's been two years since I've seen you. How's father? Captain Drummond, something terrible has happened. What is it? My father. He's dead. Dead? Yes, they say it was an accident, but I know better. It was murder. Somebody killed my father. Murder? Now, Miss Wynn, uh, tell me as simply as you can what happened. I don't know. I saw father only a half hour ago, and he was fine then. And then they told me that he'd been riding on the roller coaster, and they found him in his seat, dead. But what makes you think it's murder? Father didn't just die. I know he didn't. Somebody killed him, Captain Robin. And you've got to help me. You've got to come out here. Now, Miss Wynn, I'll do whatever I possibly can. Denny and I'll leave immediately. Tell me, where are you now? At the Wonderland, out at North Beach. All right. Now, please try to steady yourself. Hold tight until we get there. And, Miss Wynn, don't tell anyone you think your father's death was murder. Miss Wynn, are you sure you're all right? Yes, Captain Drummond. I was upset when I spoke to you, but I'm all right now. Really, I am. You're very brave, Miss Wynn, very brave. Well, this is Miller, our Barker, Captain Drummond. He's the man who first found Father. How do you do, Miller? Now, can you tell me exactly what happened? Well, uh, the roller coaster came in at the end of the ride, and uh, I saw someone lying slumped over in his seat. I didn't know it was Mr. Wynn until I went over and picked him up. And there he was, Captain Drummond, dead. How was he lying? Well, like I said, slumped over, his head down on his chest, way over on the right side of the car. What was Mr. Wynn doing on that ride? Well, I guess he was testing it. What do you mean, testing it? Oh, he did it every week, just about this time. He'd always take the ride himself to see if the whirlwind was in good condition. He's been doing it for years. Yes, that's right, Captain Drummond. Father said he'd never ask a patron to ride on the coaster if he himself wouldn't ride on it. Hmm. But why should this ride have killed him, then? I don't know, Captain. The doctor here said it was his heart. Well, it's true. Father's heart was never good. And recently, he'd taken a turn for the worse. Miller and I finally persuaded him to see a doctor about it. We drove in together yesterday. And the doctor said to avoid overstrain and sudden shock. Miss Wynn, I never saw your father get on a whirlwind. If I had, I'd have stopped him. Yes, I know you would, Miller. Thank you. Well, Miller, you've been very helpful. I think you'd better get back to your work now. The crowd seems a little jittery, upset by the accident. See what you can do to quiet them. All right, I'll do my best, Captain Drummond. If you should need me, I'll uh, be glad to help. Miss Wynn, I, I don't like to ask you this again, but... What makes you think your father was murdered? I made him promise me yesterday, after we'd seen the doctor, that he wouldn't go on the whirlwind again. 
And he said that he'd let Miller test it in the future. No, Captain Drummond's father didn't go on that ride voluntarily. Hmm. Had your father any enemies here? Enemies? No. Except perhaps Mr. Carlson, but... No, I, I wouldn't say they were enemies. Mr. Carlson? Yes, he's the owner of the large oyster house a few piers down on the Sound. You see that neon sign on the yacht out there in the bay? Uh, where? No, no, there. That, that ship anchored just beyond the jetty. Oh, yes, yes, I see. Yes. Carlson's oysters are in season. Pretty color that sign makes. That's it. He's a sort of competitor of father's. He runs a resort on the Jersey coast. And he made us an offer to buy out the Wonderland a few days ago, but my father wouldn't sell. They had some words about it, but nothing serious. I see. Did he threaten your father? Oh, no. No, nothing like that. Why, Captain Drummond, you don't think... I don't think anything yet, Miss Wynn. I'm just asking questions. And the next thing I want to know is how to take a ride on the roller coaster. Denny and I are going for a trip on the whirlwind. Are you all right back there, Denny? Oh, yes, sir. This is quite a ride, sir. Quite a daring ride. You are right. That last dip was very steep. Steep enough, I'd say, to kill a man with a weak heart. You, you mean, sir, you believe Mr. Wynne was really killed? I'm not sure yet. Oh, wait, wait, don't move, Denny. Uh, what's that, sir? Don't move. Now, tell me, where are you sitting? Why, here, sir. Back here on the left side of the seat. That's it, on the left side of the seat. That last dip curves sharply to the right. The speed of the roller coaster would naturally throw us both to the left. Yeah, naturally, sir. I purposely sat alone in the front seat, Denny, with you in the seat behind me, to see what would happen. Well, I, I'm sorry to be dull, sir, but I don't see what you're driving at. Miller, the barker, told us that he found Wynne's body slumped over in the front seat on the right-hand side of the car. That means he couldn't possibly have been on that ride alone. Otherwise, that last dip would have thrown him over to the left the way it did us. Then he wasn't alone, sir, when he took that fatal ride. No. Someone rode alongside of him. Someone who knew he had a weak heart and knew he couldn't stand the shock of that last drop. Someone who forced him on that ride. Then you mean, sir... That Miss Wynne was right. Her father didn't die accidentally. Mr. Wynne was murdered on his own roller coaster. Well, Isabel, you were right. Then father was murdered, Captain Drummond. Yes. Someone forced him on that roller coaster, knowing the sharp curves and drops would be too much for his heart. But why? Well, who would want to do that, sir? I don't know yet. Now, Isabel, I want you to tell me what other attractions you have here at Wonderland. Well, we have the shooting gallery here, as you see. Yes. And uh, what's down there? Well, just past the shooting range, over to the left, you can see the whirl go on. Then there's the carousel across the road. Why, what are you after, Captain Drummond? I don't know yet. I'm just getting an idea. Go on. That's about all. Except for the whirlwind and the ride in the moonlight. A uh, ride in the moonlight? What's that? Oh, it sounds very romantic, sir. It is. It's a kind of modern old mill built right out into the water. No oh, boy and a girl like a boat ride in the moonlight. Well, we fixed up some boats with outboard motors, and the couples take them out on the sound. I'd like to see that ride, Isabel. It's just around the corner here, but I don't think you'll find it very exciting, Captain. You can't tell. Well, there it is. Ride in the moonlight. See, the boats leave through that passageway on the right. And they ride under a tunnel for about 50 yards, and then they're out in the sound. The route beyond the tunnel is marked by buoys, and you run along the sound for about a minute, and then back through another tunnel to the start. Hmm. Very ingenious. It sounds very attractive. It's very popular, too. Isabel, would you care to take a ride in the moonlight with me? Uh, with me and Denny, of course. Why, yes, Captain Drummond, if you think it worthwhile. I do. Oh, 
Ah, here's a boat, sir. It's called the Rhoda. You see, all the boats have names. It's a very pretty craft, if I may say so. All right, the Rhoda will do. Oh, excuse me, sir, Miss Wynn, uh, but the Rhoda's out of commission. We've got to overhaul her. Why not take this boat, the Mary Ann? She's in shipshape condition and just as comfortable. Very well. The Mary Ann it is. Uh, give the motor a turn, will you, Denny? Right, sir. Ah, ready, sir. Here we go. I say, sir, it's quite dark in this tunnel. That seems to be the idea, Denny. We'll be out on the sound in just a minute now. You haven't noticed anything yet, have you? I mean, anything out of the ordinary? No, everything seems to be in order. What's that? Well, the motor, sir. I, I think it backfired. That wasn't backfired, Denny. That was a gunshot. Keep low, Isabel. Someone's watching us. Someone's anxious to keep us from learning something. I'll be back in a moment to continue my story. Denny and I discovered that Anthony Wynne, an old friend of mine, was murdered. His accidental death due to heart failure was no accident, but a coldly planned killing. And in our search for the killer, Denny and I were in one of the little ride-in-the-moonlight boats with Isabel, Anthony's daughter. In the darkness of the tunnel, a shot rang out. Keep low, Isabel. Someone's watching us. Someone's anxious to keep us from learning something. Denny, can you speed up that motor? I'll try, sir. No, I can't. It, it's set at a fixed speed. All right, we'll just have to hug the bottom, then. Keep down, both of you. Hold on. What's that? What, sir? The Carlson sign on his yacht there. The Oysters are in season sign. See it? Yes. It's flashing off and on. I never saw that before. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Ten flashes. What do you make of it, sir? Denny, what time is it? Oh, it's, it's hard to make out in this light, sir. It's, oh, it's just 15 minutes before 10 o'clock, sir. 10 o'clock, that's it. I think I've got it. We're going to have to work faster than I thought. What do you mean, Captain Robinson? We've got to get back to shore. Denny and I are going to Carlson's Oyster Bar. We're going to investigate some oysters on the half shell. Let's move over to the Oyster Bar, Denny. Is it 10 yet? Almost, sir. It's about three minutes before the hour. Keep your eyes open. For what, sir? Anything unusual. Denny. Yes, sir? That man there at the oyster bar. The one taking the box of oysters, sir? Yes. Yes, I heard him order a dozen oysters to take out. Let's move over and I'll stumble against him. I'll try to knock the package out of his hand. See if you can get one of those oysters. I'll try, sir. Excuse me, sir. Could you spare me a match? I... Oh, oh I'm... Just, you clumsy fool! Oh, I say, I'm dreadfully sorry. Really, I am here. Let me help you pick them up. Get away from here. Get away, you stumbling idiot. Leave those oysters alone. Don't you touch them. I'll kill you. I don't want your help. Get out of my way, you fool, you bundly fool. Good work, Denny. Dear, what a frenzied temper. There must be something the matter with that man. Did you get one? D did you see that man, sir? He turned purple with rage. I never saw anything like it in my life, sir. Yes, yes, I saw him, Denny. And I think I know why. You did get one of the oysters, didn't you? Oh, yes, I did, sir. And most amazing, sir, these oysters aren't opened. I never heard of anyone ordering unopened oysters before, did you, sir? Not unless they aren't to be eaten. What do you mean, Captain Drummond? I'll know in a moment. Give me that oyster, Denny. Uh, no, 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 not here. Come over to the corner. I want to open it. Open it, sir? Give me a knife. Thank you. There, that does it. Well, that isn't an oyster, sir. No, Denny. There's a small white package in between these oyster shells. What do you make of it, sir? Come on, I'll tell you as we go. We haven't a moment to waste. We're going for another ride on the Mary Ann. Another exciting ride in the moonlight. Well, what about that oyster, sir? Dope, Denny. Dope, sir? Yes. 
The oyster house is merely a blind for dope peddling. They take oysters, open them slightly, remove the meat, put in the drug, and close the shells again. I thought it was odd for a man to come up to the oyster bar and order a dozen oysters in season to take out. One doesn't ask for oysters in season, unless one means something besides oysters. Oh, I see, sir. And that man I encountered, he must have been a purchaser. That's why he was so furious when I bumped into him. That man was an addict. You notice his face, the horrible tenseness of his eyes and the stiffness of his body? Yes, I did. He seemed almost ready to kill me, sir. And he might have, if he'd seen you take an oyster. Such men are desperate, and they'll stand for no interference. Denny, it was this that Mr. Wynne discovered before he was killed. You mean they found out that Mr. Wynne knew of their traffic in the foul drug, eh, sir? Exactly. And Carlson, knowing Mr. Wynne had a weak heart, forced him to ride on the whirlwind, thereby murdering him. Yes, but how could Carlson know that, sir? Miller, the barker. You remember he drove Miss Wynne and her father in to see the doctor yesterday? The Miller's mixed in it, too. I... I say, Captain Drummond, where are you taking the boat? You're not following the buoys. You're going out further into the sound. We're taking a detour, Denny. We're going to visit Carlson's yacht. I suspect it's much more than an advertisement for the oyster house and much more than a yacht. All right, Denny, shut off the motor. We'll glide in. I don't want to broadcast our approach. Right, sir. Look, Denny, that boat there. Why, it's the rotor, sir. But the starter told us it was out of working order. Yes, out of working order for us. But an important part in Carlson's plan. What do you mean, sir? Never mind right now. Let's get up these steps and aboard. Walk quietly, Denny. There's no need to be what? quiet, Captain what? Drummond. We've been expecting you. Carlson? Yes, Captain Drummond, Carlson. I'm flattered you should know me without an introduction. Oyster house owner, yachtman, and as you have so ably demonstrated, smuggler. But right now, on the business end of a gun. Get up here, quick. Both of you. Very clever, Carlson. Now, back over there to that door. We uh, couldn't understand why you took so long in getting here. Perhaps the Marianne was too slow. You should have tried the rotor. She's much faster, as your charming friend, Miss Wynne, can tell you. Miss Wynne? Is she... Yes. I took the precaution of inviting Miss Wynne to my yacht. We will say that uh, she is my guest. She occupies the cabin here. Not a very willing guest, I might add, but nevertheless a guest. I warn you, Carlson, if you harm Miss Wynne... Now, Wynn... look, Drummond, I give the orders here. Now, open that door. Down those steps and be quick about it. Pull open that door and get inside. Now, this is the anchor room, Drummond. The room in which the anchor chain piles when we lift anchor. You see the windlass there and the chain attached. I'm uh, sorry it's not very comfortable. And when we hoist anchor, you may find it a bit overcrowded. But... Uh, <laughs> you won't mind it for long. We uh, take off at uh, five past eleven. Just about to pull anchor. You know this is murder, don't you, Carlson? First win, and now us. Win? Murder? Oh, oh that was heart failure, Drummond. Heart failure. You heard the doctor's report. And as for you, I didn't know you'd stowed away on my boat. And I never thought you'd hide in the anchor chain room. Your uh, accidental death will come as a shock to me, Captain Drummond. A great blow. Well, I see we're hoisting anchor. Well, goodbye, uh, Captain Drummond. The door, Denny. Let's see if we can move it. Right, no, it's no use. It's two inches of steel. I say, the, the chain is beginning to fill up the room, sir. We've got to stop it. We've got to find something to keep that chain from piling in here. Quick, Denny, come around here. Give me a hand with this pipe. Coming, sir. It's one chance in 10,000, Denny, but we've got to take it. This steam pipe here may provide the power for hoisting the anchor. There must be a steam winch somewhere here, and I think this pipe is it. 
No, sir. Watch it, Denny. That pipe contains live steam. Oh, dear. Here, here, take this rag. Wrap it around your hands and pull this way toward me when I say so. Right, sir. I'm ready. All right, then. Pull. Yeah. It's bending. Now, once more, together. Pull. <laughs> Watch out, Denny. That live steam will scorch you. Keep behind it. Ah, I say you've done it, sir. The anchor stopped moving. Hand me that splintered oar, will you, Denny? Yes, sir. Now, if I can force this piece of rag into the pipe with a stick, I'll be able to plug up that steam. Give me a hand, Denny, but watch out for the steam. Good. Now, help me bend this pipe in the direction of the door. They'll be down in a minute to find out what's wrong, and we'll be able to greet them properly. That's got it. Now, stand back, Denny. What's going on in there? Come on, get out of there, both of you. Miller, here's something you didn't expect. Oh! That's done it, Denny. The force of that steam was like a blow in the head. Miller's out. Get his gun. Right, sir. Now, help me plug up this pipe. We've got to get on deck. Hurry, Denny. The sooner we get up on deck, the quicker we'll get to Carson. All right, Drummond. Your little escape is over. Drop that gun. Yeah, very clever stopping that anchor. Now, get over there, both of you. Back up against that cabin. It looks as if my anchor method was a little too subtle for you. I gotta use the crudest method of all to get rid of you. A bullet through your head. You'll never get away with this, Carson. I saved the talk. Now, who wants it first? You, Drummond, or you? Good work, Miss Wynn. Get those guns, Denny. I've got them, sir. Now, up with your hands, Carlson. Up with them, I say. Why, are you, Lord? Never mind that, Carlson. Get over here. Denny, give me one of those guns. Who hit me? I did. You were so sure of yourself, Carlson, you never saw Miss Wynn lean out of the cabin porthole. Denny, go unlock that door and let Miss Wynn out. Right, sir. If I may say so, sir, it's a great privilege to unlock the door for the guardian angel. Are you all right, Isabel? Yes, I'm fine. Good. Denny, go down in the hold and pick up Miller. He'll be coming too just about now. Right, sir. Oh, and Denny. Yes, sir. I want to get Carlson and Miss Wynn back to shore. We'll take the Mary Ann. The rotor's still tied on at the landing steps. Bring Miller up and take him back with you in the rotor. Keep an eye on him, Denny. Keep a finger on your trigger. I'll take good care of him, sir. See you later. Have a pleasant ride, Mr. Carlson. Captain Drummond, did this man kill my father? Yes, he and Miller. They did it together. Your father found out that Carlson was running more than an oyster house. That's why Carlson tried to buy him out. And then when father wouldn't sell... He forced him on the roller coaster. But why? Because he was smuggling dope. That was it? Yes. He brought the drugs into the sound on his yacht and used the ride your father was operating as a blind for his smuggling. He landed his stuff on shore through the ride in the moonlight. The ride in the moonlight? Yes. One of his men, and perhaps a woman, to make it look like two people enjoying the ride, would buy a ticket, run the boat out through the tunnel into the sound... And then they'd steer out to the yacht where the packages would be picked up. I see. And in those packages? Oysters. Oysters? Mm-hmm. Oysters packed with a drug. In case they were discovered in the process, those packages were very proper. Just a box of oysters bought at Carlson's Oyster Bar. How did you find out about the ride in the moonlight? Well, when we took our first ride, you remember the attendant said not to take the rotor, that she was out of order? Yes, I do remember. Well, I ran my hand across the motor was still hot. The boat was in good shape, and as I judged from the make of the motor, faster than the other boats. And then there was oil on the front of the boat. Oil? Yes, Carlson, oil. When we took that first ride, Isabel, and stayed in the lanes marked for the ride, our boat didn't pick up any oil. But the rotor had oil on her bow. Now, oil on the sound can mean only one thing, a vessel. Carlson's yacht is the only vessel within half a mile. That was the last piece to the puzzle. Uh, the last piece but one. 
What do you mean, the last but one? The last question was how to get off Carlson's yacht with him pointing a gun at me. And you answered that one, Isabel. With my good right hand. Yes. When we've deposited our murderer here and Denny comes in with Miller, the ride and the moonlight will be restricted to couples interested exclusively in the moon. I'll be back in just a moment to tell you about next week's story. Next week, Denny and I encounter an ex-convict with but one thing on his mind, revenge. Our story involves the brutal slaying of three people, all involved as murder gets out on bail. Be sure to listen, won't you? Mm -hmm.